Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and the day has finally come. We've got the Hammond Collection Therizinosaurus here to take a look at. I've had many requests for this review to get up on the channel. I've just had so much stuff lately to put up on the channel that it's taken me a little bit to get to this one, but really happy to finally pop this out of the box and check it out. You can see the box art looks pretty much the same as your usual Hammond Collection releases do. You've got the window area, a very cool image of the figure, the Therizinosaurus species name and the Hammond Collection logo as well as the Jurassic logo up there in the top and then if you turn it to the side you can see a really cool image of the Therizinosaurus definitely very nicely done very nice dino toy photography they always include on the boxes you've got the Jurassic World Dominion logo up here on the top it's your standard stuff we've got the Hammond Collection logo here on the side and then on the back you can see some really nice images of the figure and a nice close-up shot of the glass eye, which I'm sure won't look quite as nice as that once we open it up. And then down here at the bottom, you can see a preview of a few other figures that we don't have quite yet, like Claire Deering, the Velociraptor Delta, and Pyroraptor. They just haven't released yet. And then, of course, the Giganotosaurus, which we have already reviewed. So let's pop this box open and check it out. So here is our Therizinosaurus. And... It's now standing here before us, and man, is that ever a nice-looking figure. Man, Mattel did such a great job on this newest round of Hammond Collection releases. Like, they really stepped up their game overall and gave us just massive improvements, honestly, in every area. I feel like these new figures are what the Hammond Collection should have been from the start. And it's not to say that the figures were bad before, but they're just so much nicer and uh, you can just see that Mattel is trying their best to give us a better product, and they are absolutely succeeding in that. And sculpt-wise, this is easily the best there is in a source that we've had. Paint-wise as well, of course, articulation for sure. Definitely a super nice-looking figure. So let's go ahead and jump to a closer look, and we'll check it out from there. So, starting up here at the head sculpt of the Therizinosaurus, you can see, as far as the actual fine detail here of the head goes, it looks really, really nice. They've also added some decent paint application, though I can see straight away here on the beak, there's a little paint mishap here where we have some of that greenish tone that kind of runs up and over the eye. Clearly has ended up on the beak of mine, so that's not very good. Don't really like that too much, but I am actually planning on acquiring another one of these very soon to kind of just touch it up and just give it a little bit more of a realistic paint scheme. And one thing I'm definitely going to do is paint over the eyes of my new one, or maybe actually this one, and then the new one I'll keep you know, original because it may not have that mishap on the beak, but the eyes, of course, have the glass eyes, and you can see looking at it from this vantage point, it looks as dead-eyed as it gets. It looks very dark. We can't really see it too well. When I was originally taking a look at it with the figure still in box, I could kind of see the eye, and I felt like it looked pretty decent, but now having it out of the packaging, I could still see it, but it by no means looks great. On top of that, you know, when it comes to the glass eyes not really looking that great to begin with, the Therizinosaurus in Jurassic World Dominion was blind, so I kind of want to recreate that specific version of the Giganotosaurus, and I know that was Mattel's intentions with this one, but just like somebody said in the review of the Giganotosaurus, where I had mentioned that I would have liked to have seen the tear in the lip, they mentioned that uh, the figure kind of can be more of like a general version of a Jurassic World uh, Giganotosaurus rather than the Jurassic World Dominion version specifically. So it's cool that it didn't have the tear, and I can agree with that. So in this instance, again, um, you know, you can look at this as just being a Jurassic World style Therizinosaurus, but this one just isn't blind. However, I personally do really want to recreate the version from Dominion, so I'm going to have to end up repainting over the eyes or something. But you can see they've nicely applied that blue over the top of that area above the head there, which looks really nice. It's been kind of like dry brushed on, and it allows the darker tones that you have up there on the top of the head to sort of creep through, which I really do quite like. We can see the nostrils right there. Again, the detail in the beak looks fairly decent. You have a slightly different shade, kind of like a little bit of maybe a darker variation of like a yellow for the beak, but you also have some of 
that yellowish tone that's kind of been dry brushed over a few areas here of the face. I love that Mattel is putting in much more effort when it comes to the paint apps on these newer figures compared to older ones. I just feel like it is such a drastic improvement over the older figures. We do, of course, have an articulated jaw for our theories and a source inside the mouth. You can see you've got some fairly decent detail in there. You've also got a nice realistic tone of color for the inside of the mouth, nice gloss coat as well. You can see the tongue sculpted pretty nicely, again, shining. You can also see the teeth of the dinosaur are sculpted out pretty nicely as well. They look like they're all just one piece that's been applied, so you're not really gonna see any sloppiness as far as like paintwork or anything goes, because obviously that would have been pre-painted before it was applied in there, but you can see the jaw does articulate pretty darn nicely. As you move up here to the top of the head, you do have a darker variation of like a blue. You've also got some feathers, of course, because the dinosaur is quite nicely feathered in the film, and you can see those feathers look really nice as you move down. Very emu-like, I would say. There is a pretty ugly seam right here, which is like standing out like a sore thumb. I guess that's just where one of the pieces were applied, so it's not really nice looking and very, very obvious, but it is what it is. As you move down, you can see we've got one spot of articulation right here in the neck at the top of the neck, and you can kind of move that around, completely swivel it around if you want to, so you can get all sorts of posability with it. And that also moves forward and back, like up and down. So you definitely have a whole lot of mobility in that spot. You can see we have more of like a grayish tone as we lead back from the lower jaw into the throat moving down. The skin texture honestly looks phenomenal as you move down. That looks really nice. The throat is really nicely sculpted. And then as you lead back up, you can see we have more of that dark blue tone moving down through the course of the neck, but you can see the reddish tones start to pick up. And I like the way that they've applied that as well because you can see it's been dry brushed on so it allows the blue to sort of creep through the reddish tones here moving down the back which I think just also on top of highlighting the detail just looks nice as a whole and uh you know, just kind of adds a little more depth to the paint job. As you move down, you do have another spot of articulation right here, which can go left and right pretty nicely. You can see you can get a nice left and right twist. You can also swivel that area as well. I didn't show this in the Giganotosaurus review, so I ended up having to make a short video here on the channel. So you can articulate it that way. Again, forward and back. You've got all sorts of mobility in that area. One thing I feel like would have suited this figure nicely would have been a wire neck like we had for the Brachiosaurus and like we have for the tail out here. But unfortunately, we don't have a wire neck. It is just a solid piece. Kind of expected it to be a wire neck, but it's not. As you move down, you can see the feathers increase in size and become quite impressive overall when it comes to the size moving down. They're also really, again, nicely sculpted. Lots of waviness to the feathers, lots of realism, I would say. Moving down into the arm, you can see we've got even more wavy feathers and a nice little area of plumage kind of hanging off of the back of the arm. But in the arm, you can see some areas of scale, detail, and skin texture. I also really quite like that this dark grayish tone leads up here into the arms and moves down through the undersides of the arms which it's not focusing on actually we'll just look at the opposing side it's a little too hard to turn the whole figure and look at it but you can see how that grayish tone runs down the underside of the arm very smooth natural transition as you move down you can also see what the palms of the hands and the undersides of the fingers look like in that area but if we come back to the arm we were initially looking at you can see the feathers leading off of the back of the arm as you move down here only breaking up in the joint of the elbow and it looks really really nice as you lead down into the fingers you can see we've got some nice scoots moving down the fingers on top of the very nice dark tone that we have going on we transition from a dark blue and then as we lead out we transition to a black for the nails that one actually has to be turned same deal yes for that one and uh, the nails have a nice black tone of color but what's cool is Mattel has actually dry brushed some lighter coloration over the scoots here on the fingers as well as dry brushed the detail out on the nails and now you can see how impressive the fine detail for those nails is like you have all sorts of cracks and crevices, lots of nice weathering to the nails for the figure, which is a really nice touch. You know, Mattel actually continuing to impress me with little areas of paintwork I wasn't expecting. Of course, being a Hammond collection release, we've got lots of articulation in the arms, probably the single most articulated arm that we've had as far as, you know, the entire thing goes in any Hammond collection release so far not even probably it definitely is so you can see we can move the arm forward and back you can also move it out away from the body so you can position it that way you've got the elbow forward and back 
and then that could probably, yep, definitely can swivel around. Then as you move down, you've got wrist articulation, forward and back, also swivels, which is really, really nice. And then you even have articulation for the nails. So you can move those up and down. And again, actually, let me just grab it in a little bit of a different position. You can see that it works with all of the nails. Really, really nice. And then again for the final one here. And then these all can swivel as well. So when it comes to articulation, the Therizinosaurus may be the most impressive in the line so far. But as you move down here into the stomach region, the lower part of the stomach, you know, leading into the underside, you can see we still have the grayish tone for the skin texture. Honestly, I feel like this figure is near perfect, except it could have definitely used like a dark wash or something for the skin textured areas. And uh, maybe... I don't know, maybe a wash of some kind up here for the feathered areas. Like, there's such minor things you would have to do to the figure to really make it jump in the realism department. But as you move along the top, you can see, again, we've got that reddish tone dry brushed all over the place, and it looks so nice with the blue creeping through, definitely highlighting the scales and looking pretty much exactly as I recall it looking in the film. Leading down the thigh, you can see the same thing here as far as the dry brushing goes and the bluish tones underneath. You can also see, again, that We've got some nice muscle definition shining. Even though it's feathered, you can see the muscle definition here shining through. Leading down, we transition to a slightly lighter shade of gray, I would say, than what we see on the underside there for the skin of the legs. You can see the knee right here. You can also see a nice big bulging calf muscle moving down. You lead down into the foot sculpt. You've got a really nicely sculpted foot, a much more proportionately sized foot sculpt than you usually see for Mattel. And the nails are painted. And on top of being painted, they're very nicely sculpted. I like that like slight hook to the end of the nails. That looks really nice. And yes, we do have dew claws, but unfortunately, this time they were skipped when it comes to the paintwork. Unfortunately, we can't get lucky like we did with the Giganotosaurus all the time. But as far as the articulation goes, the leg goes forward and back. Very, very jerky, but it does. You can also move it out away from the body. So you can see that right there. As you lead down, you've got the knee forward and back. You can also swivel. And then leading down, you've got another area of articulation right here forward and back. It's very stiff. Let me go ahead and get a hold of just the leg. It's going to be upside down right now, but there you go. You can see forward and back, and again can swivel. And then we've got one final spot again for the articulation right here. Again, allowing you to have that really nice posability in the lower part of the foot so it looks like it's taking a step and stuff. And again, can swivel in that area as well. And then as you lead back up, you lead out toward the tail. You've got a few more kind of scruffy feathers right there as we lead out and the tail feathers become a little bit more calmed down. You can see we still have the reddish tone dry brushed over the bluish tone and that leads the entire way out through the length of the tail, which is so nice to see such a beautifully fully painted figure from Mattel. As you lead here, you can see the grayish tone continues to run along the underside really nicely sculpted detail down there as well. You do have the tail articulation, which can swivel, but it sounded like I broke it. Doesn't swivel too well. I don't know. It was like jammed in there. There we go. We're moving a little bit better now. Not sure what was going on, but of course, on top of that, you can move the tail up and down, left, right, and we have the wire tail for the figure, so you can pose the tail pretty much any way you would like. Now, of course, once we move it around, we take a look at the opposing side. Everything's going to be the same over here as what we had seen on the initial side because it is a fully posable figure. You're really not going to see any differences over here. Everything looks pretty much just as it did on the initial side and again just absolutely epic the entire way through so this is far and away one of the single most impressive hammond collection figures we've seen yet as far as a size goes in the position it's in actually let me extend the neck out so we can try to get like a maximum length on the figure so from the beak to the tail you were looking at about I'd say around 19 inches, maybe 19 and a quarter inches or about 49 centimeters. And then for a height, if we bring it back and then reposition the neck and just put it up like this. Now, of course, it could go taller depending on the way you position it. But in this position, you're looking at around 10 inches or about 25 and a half centimeters, roughly. For a size comparison, 
There is Mr. Papo T-Rex, the Attack Pack Colovasaurus, Robert Muldoon, and the Collect A Human Being next to our Therizinosaurus here from the Hammond Collection. And you can definitely see that it is a very large figure, definitely a nicely sized one. It looks like it's probably bigger than the previously released uh, Therizinosaurus, but not nearly as large as you would get with the T-Rex, the Brachiosaurus, or the Giganotosaurus, but still quite nicely sized. Here we've got a comparison with the original release of the Therizinosaurus from Mattel, and man, the difference here is like night and day. The Hammond Collection version is so much better looking, so much more accurate, and just generally a better figure all around, also a good bit larger than the original version. We've also got a size comparison here with the Hammond Collection Ankylosaurus to show you how much larger the Therizinosaurus is here as well. We've got the Therizinosaurus here now next to a Hammond Collection Velociraptor, the Jurassic Park Raptor, which I've customized and, you know, replacement head treatment here when it comes to the Marco Cirrut Tech stuff. But you can see again that the Therizinosaurus, of course, is massively larger. But then when we bring in the Carnotaurus, you can see the Carnotaurus is actually fairly similar in size to the Therizinosaurus, with the Therizinosaurus being only a little bit bigger, honestly. It's definitely a lot taller because of that long neck, but when it comes to like overall body mass and length and everything, I would say they're pretty similar. Maybe the Therizinosaurus is a little bit thicker in the body, but not too far off overall. And then we've got the comparison that I think most people probably want to see because we've got basically two-thirds of the final scene of Dominion here with the Giganotosaurus and the Therizinosaurus, also the two most recent Hammond Collection releases. And very clearly, the Therizinosaurus is a good bit smaller than our Giganotosaurus. And I have heard many people state that the Therizinosaurus is a bit too small, and I would definitely be inclined to agree. I feel like it certainly should have been a little bit bigger to really match nicely with the Giga the way we see them in the film. But obviously, Mattel seems to have like different size ranges for their figures, and the larger like theropod size range would be like the T-Rex, the Giga, and the Therizinosaurus, I feel like, is like that medium size range, or like slightly smaller large size range that you find the Carnotaurus and stuff in. So the Therizinosaurus does suffer from being a little bit smaller than it probably should be, but it still looks amazing. And I don't feel like we need to do too many comparisons with the Therizinosaurus. I feel like we've covered, you know, a large portion of the different type of figures that you see in the Hammond Collection. But here is the Hammond Collection T-Rex. Again, my customized version that seems to always be very excited with its mouth open trying to kill something. But you can see again next to the Therizinosaurus, the Rex is definitely a good bit larger, pretty much as you would expect it to be. And actually, I guess just to make sure we pretty much covered all of our bases here, here is the Ceratosaurus as well, which is again a different size range of Hammond Collection figures next to the Therizinosaurus, again just to give you one final comparison. So this brand new Mattel Jurassic World Dominion Hammond Collection Therizinosaurus is definitely a really really nice figure and you know, for sure, one of the best that the Hammond Collection has had to offer so far. And with just seeing how incredible this figure is, boy, does it ever have me so hyped for whatever they are going to release in the future. I'm really excited at the potential of seeing like a Hammond Collection Spinosaurus or a Hammond Collection Indominus or something like that in this size range at some point. I would be so happy to see that stuff. And uh, again, this Therizinosaurus is just gorgeous. When it comes to the sculpt, it matches in my opinion perfectly to the way it appears in Jurassic World Dominion. The paint apps as well are really nicely done and again they've done like extra stuff to this like dry brushing little hints of yellows over the face and into the beak and then the dry brushing down onto the scoots and the nails just stuff like that really makes me appreciate a figure even more and appreciate Mattel's efforts to make sure we get a really beautiful figure with this release. I think as a whole the sculpt and paint apps are some of the best we've ever seen in the Hammond collection. On 
on top of that, of course, this thing is loaded with articulation. And I would say probably is the most articulated Hammond collection figure so far that I can think of, especially when you just look at the arms. The arms have so much articulation leading down. And again, the claws being articulated is pretty much just the icing on the cake there. But all of the articulation seems really smooth, very nice, and uh, works perfectly. The only thing I think it would have changed would have been to give it the rubber uh, bendable wire neck. I feel like that would have been a really nice addition to the figure, but even still, this neck that we have works pretty nicely. And the only other thing that I can say is a downside would be the glass eyes. The glass eyes are just not working so far. I don't know why. I love the idea behind it. I think it is a very good idea. It just needs some tweaking to really look good. And we still, again, lose the pupil looking at it and uh, it just doesn't really look that great. Not nearly as nice as you see in the original uh, you know, images on the box and stuff. So something that Mattel definitely needs to work on would be the glass eyes. But outside of that, I feel like this figure is phenomenal. So if you are interested, I will include a link in the description to where you can purchase it at some point on Target.com. From what I've been told, it seems as though it's been out of stock now for a few days since it actually went up for sale. But it's showing up currently in store and will be appearing again on Target.com. So if you don't see it on there, just be patient. It'll be back soon or find it in store. One way or another, definitely pick this up and like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.